Oh, what is up, my dudes? Let's go with the more exciting people. I always go live a little bit before on Facebook lately. They're boring. I'm sorry, Facebook, you're boring. You do people way more exciting. How y'all doing? Good. Very good. I'm just going to sip on some coffee for a minute here. Um, we have the boat. It's in place. I have moved this thing twice now. What's up, David? What's up, guys? You guys are way more fun than Facebook. Thought you did it already? Uh, we did this one, but now we have to do that side. So we spent a few hours playing around with it, learning what we needed to learn, and now we're better for it. So the, another boat. So uh, this should go faster for the other side. Cancellations today. I have an ATS if you want it. I'll send it out your way. He called this morning. I felt really bad, I did, but I don't. I don't have anything else I can do. So we sched like verbally scheduled, but I always, I always make sure that they know that they need to leave a deposit. And then if I don't hear from them on the deposit, somebody else is going to leave a deposit. So he called this morning. and was like, "Hey, I have an appointment for tomorrow, right?" And I was like. Uh, let me double check. You left the deposit, right? And he's like, uh, and I was like, uh, I don't think he's too happy right now, but I, I honestly don't have anything I can do. CJ. CJ with a five. What's up, buddy? Taking a Prius and board. So I'm happy you went live. <laughs> it's good to hear. Thank you, I appreciate it. What Prius? I've heard a couple of them, a couple of the newer ones absolutely suck. I haven't had one for a while. But there's been like funny front quarters on those. How long did it take you to tint that side? Oh, we spent like, like up to two hours. Hey, so I believe I'll be doing Tint School Online after talking to many who've done it. They said it's great business-wise, too. What should, I, what should I look for when looking to pay someone to teach me more hands-on? Um, it's hard to say. Um, most people aren't... I try and find somebody in the group, possibly, if you can, or go to a dedicated place that actually teaches... Because it's one thing to like pay somebody to teach you, and then it's one thing to go to, s to people that are actually capable of teaching well, if that makes sense. Like, it's not everybody that tints can teach how to do it very well. It's kind of a little skill on its own. Because you gotta like put yourself in, in a new person's position or something. But being that you were, what, seven months in or so, you kind of know more what to look for than being walked through. So that, it's tough to say. Um, but yeah, uh, the Tint School Online, I would definitely take advantage of whatever they have for business. Any info you can get to give you a head start in the tint business, like, it, their course is definitely on the expensive side, but you, you make that money back quickly. How long have you been tinting? Uh, I have... 2009, I think. So uh, I'm 32. I'm almost 33. I'll be 33 in June. As my wife says, off calendar. Because there's 32 days on a calendar. No, that was last year, wasn't it? Oh my God, that was last year. <gasps> I'm already off the calendar. Dang, never mind. Last year was it. Oh, God, the years blend together. 31. 
Never mind. I'm already off calendar. So if you're 32, you're off calendar. Why do I think there was 32 days? God, I gotta wake up. Uh, they're good, though. Stumbled across a video of you tinning uh, from 2010. This has to be muscle memory by now. Yeah, what's kind of funny about that, too, is uh, somebody, uh, somebody new took a video of me tinning back to back, one side to the other. And it was kind of eerie how muscle memory it becomes because you can do things at a similar pace in a similar fashion without even realizing it. And he could basically, he lined up both videos and like didn't even try, didn't even try to line it up. Uh, and then, oh, I'm reading. Didn't even try to line it up. And then when you matched them together, it was just like everything was at the same pace, even though I was talking. It kind of freaked me out. But yeah, that's, it, it's nice because what ends up happening as a tenor, it all becomes muscle memory. So you like look to try and do other stuff while you're tinning. So it's like listening to music, podcast, well, like, you know, the usual, but like learning stuff while you're tinning or talking to people on the phone or live streaming. No van, no vanuary has 32 days. <laughs> oh God. I've used thermoses with like plastic tops and by this time they're starting to get a little cold. I finally got one with a top on it. And what's handy about, you can hang it. I was looking for one that you can hang and then it fell over and it uh, broke it. It still works, but I broke it. First day. What am I tinning? Not this. Definitely not this thing right here. Yes, the boat. Someone in the group just posted that somebody tinted their car for $80 and he comes to you. Does that make sense? To him, it does. To everybody else, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it's, you don't value your own time anymore at that. I, appre I can appreciate the hustle on some level, but, dude, it's, it's more than just, this is the cost of my film, and I can go do the job, right? There's more to it than that. You have to figure out what your time is worth. How difficult is it to learn? Uh, it's frustrating. It's very tedious. There's a lot of little teeny tiny things that you always have to keep in mind when you're tinning. Eventually it turns into like, like we were talking about muscle memory. But getting to that point can be really frustrating. Lots of thrown things. <laughs> Kicking things over, tossing stools, yelling. Uh, frustration, walking away, never wanting to come back. <laughs> it's, di it's not always like that for everybody, but, you know, I mean, you, re like, you go through all the steps, you try and put it on, you screw up. You go through all the steps, try and put it on again, you screw up. You go th and then it's like by the third, fourth time, you're really like, mm. I had a guy get hostile when I told him the price the other day. Like, my prices offended him. <laughs> Why you got to be so offensive? <laughs> a lot of yelling and kicking. Absolutely. I'm a professional detailer, but I'm very interested in offering this as, offering this as a service as well. Um, I'm, you definitely could. I know detailers that tint. The hard part is... Tinting is really its own skill outside of detailing. So it's really like an extra thing, like you said, like as a, as a service as well, but it's gonna be like an add-on to what you're doing already. And the time it takes to tint, how many, do you have another detail that you could fit in there and that's where it gets a little tricky. So you'd almost be better off finding somebody that can tint and then you handle the detailing and they tint it, and then you knock out 
extra work in the same amount of time. So that was like my, my thinking also with, uh, I learned this hard way with like paint protection film and vinyl. It's like they all kind of add up to being similar. And you, the only thing that you can do is have another person help to help take that time down. Boat two. Really love to know what you did before tinting. Um, let's see, just a couple small jobs, nothing crazy. So uh, my very first job was Quiznos for like two weeks, not even two weeks. Um, and then what was the other one? Dairy Queen. I worked at Dairy Queen for a little while. He didn't see my message either. Would really love to know what you did before. Oh, I was just talking about it. Look at that. Wait, let's wait one second. Oh, dang. Hello, it's in studio. How can I help you? Uh, not today, I'm sorry. The earliest I have is Monday morning. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I gotcha. Um, that'd be kind of hard to fit on on Monday. I'm set up for like, a, I got a full car available spot, but with the removal. Uh, what, you, what type of car is it? Okay. Oh. Well, and th like if it came off clean, the problem is sometimes you can remove the tint, but it usually leaves a bunch of glue behind. So that's always the toss up. So a full removal is 200 bucks right now. And a full window tint on top of that would be 240. Because it's usually removals are going to take me anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half easily. Yeah. I mean, if he... Yeah, if you could maybe drop it off all day, I could get it in. The problem is just that removal, because that's going to take up a good chunk of my morning. I mean, if you want to think about it and then give me a call back, I could get you in Wednesday for sure, too, as well. Uh, Monday, if you can drop it off, though. Um, I close by 5. Okay, sounds good, man. Yep, bye. Oof, oof, not fun. He has a, uh, a cruise that he paid to get tinted, and he doesn't like the job, so now he has to pay to have it removed and retinted. 200 for removal. So usually I was anywhere from, I was usually like 150 for removal. I've upped it because I just don't want to take removals right now. Uh-oh, one second. Hello, Tint Studio, how can I help you? Uh, do, do you just call me about the cruise? <laughs> this is, I just talked to you. Yeah, no worries. Bye. <laughs> uh, that always makes me laugh. People don't, uh, people don't, they just start calling around so many places, they lose track of where they called, and then he called immediately back. Um... So, yeah, like, and I gave this, there's this one other guy with an Audi. I gave him a break because the film, like, fell off the back window. So it's like I do it to protect myself. And there's some, usually, like, a normal removal. I'm going to be spending an hour and a half sometimes to get all the glue off. And then you're still, like, tediously scraping out the little bits and then something, like, it's... Dude, the, the amount of time that I, like, I could tint basically another car and a half... Or like another car in that amount of removal time. So it's, it's ah, I hate it. I don't like that I have to put it there. But when you have, right now, when you have other work waiting to get done, like, ugh. 
Any more videos of trying more Amazon tints? Uh, no. No, I have some, though. And I keep forgetting to do it. I'd like to do it as a stream. I think that would be fun. Um, I have a ceramic, and then I also have some, like, UV changing film. So I got whatever the cheapest uh, changing, like from like 70 to 20% or whatever with UV. It's cool. Moto Shield? Actually, yeah. I, w I opened the box. Their packaging is pretty crazy. They put like, like some of them, they'll just twist up the roll, throw it in a cardboard box and ship it. Moto Shield has like one of those Gila boxes, but they have like a cardboard box wrapping in their nice actual Gila style box and then they have like a tube and then they have like a sticker like it's just their packaging was was actually really on point where can I buy the hoodie ooh I do have a link so this was a tint was uh collab they did it with a bunch of tinters so let me show you guys because I don't have merch so they took it upon themselves to <laughs> have, uh, have the one and only Carrie do all these sick designs. Oh, these look so cool. So go to TintWiz, TintWiz.com, and then click on the shop button. And then they have, uh, like, collections and stuff here. This is, oh, this is TintWiz, and then shop. And then there's mine. And then you, if you want one, use the code tint stuff, and you'll get twenty bucks off. And that's the cost of the to get the hoodie made. I haven't done any of these though. I think I'd have to do one of these for the summertime. But yeah, they have a handful of these. They look really cool. So they have different collections and stuff. I want one with a zipper, though, and I don't know how to get that because it's kind of like, I think it's like a, wh whoever's doing like all the, the work, they just, this is the style that they have. I want to have a zipper because zip hoodies are awesome. Zip hoodies is like, you don't know what the weather's going to be like in Michigan all the time, so it's going to be like freezing in the morning, and then it's going to be hot in the afternoon, like we're getting into that flaky time. You just want like something on, but I hate pullover hoodies for that reason. So. How did you pull the boat around if the tongue of the trailer is up front? I literally pushed it. I can push it. I got, I got a little strength in me. I, I pushed this bit. It took me a little while to get it up here because that little like bump Fuck, dude. Uh, Pull it all the way back. I had to do that about five times. And then I finally got it up that little bump. But yeah, it's not too bad uh, if you get the little wheel thingy to like move it around and stuff. So. <clears throat> it was super annoying yesterday because I had to. Uh, I had it here, we did the one window, and then I had appointments here. So then I had to move it over there, and then move it back. And then we're gonna have to move it again, so. So fun. I'd show you guys, but one, I don't wanna be overly embarrassed, and two, I really don't wanna fucking move it again. <laughs> Are you from Detroit? Uh, the Detroit area, I'm outside of Detroit. <laughs> yes, and I grew up on Nine Mile, if that counts, right, right by Eight Mile. But well outside, uh, well outside Detroit. <laughs> I'm a professional window tenor since 2003. Great job, greetings from Greece. What's up, man? How you doing? Welcome. Yeah, that was kind of like, that was why we did the whole Detroit Tint Studio thing, because it's like, the city that I'm in, nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to know where the hell it is, so Detroit's the most iconic thing that's close enough. 
Did you know Slim Shady? Yeah, we're bros. Nope. <laughs> no, but I like I grew up so the the mile roads is is something like there's it goes down to five mile. So you have five mile, six mile, seven mile, eight mile. It goes all the way up into the twenties. So like the glass shop is over on twenty three mile. So it just keeps going. And those are like really long roads too. So you can have like suburbs all the way down to like Detroit, right? So, I, uh, I, I never really thought about it much growing up, and then the movie Eight Mile came out, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I just, it's, Detroit's got a whatever name attached to it, and so you just, being from here, you don't really think about it much. But yeah, I grew up on Nine Mile. <laughs> when are you going to restock the clay bars? I'm trying. I'm trying real hard. Uh, everything went out of stock. Not everything, but my main Glass 8 things. And now I got distributors calling me because, what the fuck? There was, I had everything, and I was fine. And then all of a sudden, February hit, and just, <laughs> distributors didn't need anything. And then February hit, and then 44, uh, Sun Distributing, and now GDI is calling me. Tint Depot, they're all like, hey, can we get some more? And I'm like, I told, I told them to order some more in the beginning. They didn't listen. They're like, no, I think we'll be good. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Now it's just completely out of stock. I still have some rolls left, but those are going to go out of stock probably within the week. Where do you get the door? Uh, the plastic for the doors? Uh, carpet shield. Oh, wait. Oh, shit, this has been going. Carpet shield. There you go. I dropped a link in chat for you. You can find it at Lowe's and Home Depot and Menards if you're in that area. I'm going to need more glass aid. You're going to want to order it soon. Very soon. Uh, Texas Tint Master, do you know him? Uh, I've seen the channel for sure. We've never spoke. I like what he's doing. It's cool. It's, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> where were these people when I was first making my channel? <laughs> What's the holdup? Logistics. Hella logistics. So the, uh, the roles should have been handled. And then all of a sudden, like, we're moving through it, we're moving through it, and then, I like, I don't know if you ever heard the canal was blocked. I don't know if that was the reason, too, but, like, logs get shipped in, they get cut down, and then they get shipped to you. That's how this works. And then all of a sudden, there's just no more logs, and they're waiting on more logs, and there's just hella logistics with shipping right now, because everybody's ordering everything. Docks and container ships are all tied up, and... Dude, it's just a fucking nightmare. Who has glass aid in stock? Uh, I still have the rolls. My tin stuff. Glass aid. There. <laughs> I like that. That's helpful. So the you can find them there. Uh, the rolls. I think the clay bars went out of stock. Uh, I'm rushing shipping on those. So like to. To put it in perspective, like, air shipping is really expensive. It's like $400 for air shipping. Yay. 94, 96 Jeep with one of those weird rear screens and the heat sensors. Have you ever done one of those? When you get into the 90s with Jeeps, you're not going to have a fun time. You're really not. Just bought some for the first time, getting used to it. It is a little weird. I wasn't even sure when I got it if that was the best solution. And then I just got in the, I just got used to, but like applying it really kind of drove me crazy because I felt like I was slowing way down, but cutting sped up so that they kind of like offset each other. If you hold the roll sideways, uh, 
it'll get better, make sure you thoroughly clean the outside before. So I'll take a squeegee, I'll like scrub it down, squeegee it so it sticks to that glass really well. Because sometimes if it's greasy, if you just take a towel and wipe it off, you're sticking it over like some residue. And then if, as you pull it, you're stretching it and it wants to pull back. So those corners will sometimes go right back into the film. So you just make sure you stretch it, or you don't stretch it, make sure you clean the glass and take just a little bit of time to make sure that it's down. You can also heat the edges and everything. Is there an Amazon platter that's good enough to use? Man, I was talking to a company, US Cutter, and they said they were gonna send one, and they never did. So I've heard you could, but they're probably gonna be a little finicky. It's hard enough to set up a Graftec plotter sometimes. Graftecs will eat through film like nobody's business. Once it's good, you're fine. And then tweaking it until it's good again will drive you absolutely insane. So even the big boy machines aren't always super user friendly. All right, I guess we should probably get started. I got some work to do. It was fun talking to you guys. This is nice. Within two years, my tin shop, uh, within two years, started coming off. Went to tint so they could fix and accused me of tampering with the tent. What? Within two years, my tents. Oh, 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 oh. Within two years, my tent started coming off. Went to the tent shop so they could fix it and they accused me of tampering with the tent. They have tinted three of my cars. I'm determined to learn how to tin now. <laughs> Holy shit. I wasted two to three rolls getting the graph tech right. Sounds about right. <laughs> and then, fuck, if it ever cuts, the roll goes back and it starts cutting on that cut strip and then you're just like starting all over again. But then it like pinches up and then it just starts cut feeding, uh, bending and oh my God. Yeah, not fun. Man, good luck trying to learn how to tint, to tint your own cars because a glass shop or a tint shop screwed you. That sucks. Wow. If I ever had somebody come back with peely windows, like that's a, that's a warranty thing. What the fuck? Like, that it's something, like, they just, it can wear out. Um, usually poor film, but then they blame it on you. Ooh, man, that, that sucks, because you don't know until you go through that kind of shit either. Do you do anything specific when you're tinning a charger back window? Uh, I shrink it. <laughs> Um, I have a couple of videos on chargers on the channel, though, so I'd check those out. Um, they're just longer windows to shrink. They take some time. Uh, they're not super duper fun, so. Should I, should I prove that I can move? Where does this go? Where's my roll? I have a roll here. Oh, that's this one. All right, we need five. Okay, so this, this is a boat. If you want to move it, I got to move it a little bit, so I guess you guys see a little bit. So, ow, fuck. So you got that wheel, and that's how you direct it, and then you just, you, what? Oh, come on, I'm sure you guys that can move a boat. Look, and then you just heave ho it a little bit. Just heave ho it, and then you can push it across the shop. But I don't want the wheels to go off, because that was a son of a bitch to get off. Now I'm not gonna hit my ankles. Cool. Ugh. That's probably gonna hurt things, isn't it? Oh, I got bench ladders. What a dumb time to freeze. <laughs> no, that's gonna fall over. All right, get yourself these things. 
Every, you're never gonna hardly need them, but when you do need them, they're gonna be super handy. So like on this boat in particular, look at that. We need to get to this space. So having these little bench ladder thingies, I think this one was 50. So two of them for 100. Get them. Whoa, what the hell is going on? What the heck? I just ordered five rolls of glass aid. My man, you'll get them. I'm confused. If I was to ever run out, is there anything you could use as a substitute? Not really, no. So the, the thing is, if you want it just for the line, for the white line, use pinstriping. You, you can find pinstriping all over the place. But it's thicker, so you don't cut the glass. I haven't been able to find anything like it, because that, like, I had to, this is just, that's the thing. I, I willed it into existence. You can't go into a hardware store and buy it anywhere. Like, it's just, it's not a thing. All right, bear with me. So, this button, that button. Good? Okay. I think we're okay. I think we had a connection issue. Where's my keys? There's my keys. All right. Oh, it's open already. I guess I don't need my keys, huh? Okay, five. Five, 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 five. I thought I was out of film, and then I was not out of film. So that's good. I thought I was like out of five and then I found a brand new roll of 20 and a brand new roll of five and I was like, ooh, baby. I still got film. This is technically uh, not my first time tending a boat. We've done the other side already uh, in a previous boat stream and I have tinted one other boat. One or two, but they haven't been like this. So, first time tinning a boat like this. This one had a nasty gash here. So, like, this has some wear and tear on it already. The owner is very cool. He was watching the first time we were fucking up, and he even was like, Yeah, don't worry about it that much. <laughs> I was like, All right. But still. We replaced it like three times. It's tricky for sure because one, shrinking it, it's not as curved as it might look. But it's uh, tricky to figure out where to like angle it. So this is out of the 36, it'll cover it. But what people were telling me last time is a 40 will make it easier to shrink because you can redirect where to shrink it. So I was like, let's just do a 36.
So what we did figure out that was really helpful, I'd say the most helpful thing was how to cut something like this out. And I don't even think it's probably the best way, but it seems pretty straightforward. So, I'm gonna kick flip it. What's the hardest window you ever tinted? Uh, stuff like this, honestly. Beretta for sure. Beretta was like, I like two pieced it in a bad way. <laughs> I only ever had one though. They pulled it in like any other car too. And I was like, God, I don't know how to do this. And they're like, why? What's tough? And I'm like, I, I need to look at it. Whoa, I just showered myself. So what we did was we cut it here all the way up. And then we shifted it this way. Because what's going to happen is you can actually cut all this exact. And when you shift it back over, the way it tapers, it'll fit in here. How much to shift it over is up to your best judgment. And if it's a little too long, you can try and cut it off on the inside. That didn't exactly go super well for me, but that's how I would approach it. VW Bug, 06 Vet, yes, those are both frustrating things. I, you know, one of the toughest vehicles I was actually really proud of at the end was a, was a vet. It was a, it was the, like the 60s, 60s styles vet. So it's got that cockpit, maybe 80s, 70s or 80s, I don't know. It's got the cockpit style back window, but it has, it doesn't lift. It's just fixed. I did a sweet fucking job on one of those. That was not an easy car to do but it turned out great. I have pictures somewhere. This makes me nervous watching. It's first time I was super, I, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. But honestly, fuck up a few times and then you'll feel better about it. How's the baby doing? He's good. He's falling out of the 92 percentile for height. <laughs> I, went, I went for his, we went for, believe it or not, he's uh, what, like five months now? Uh, we went for his four month checkup and they measured him and they're like, he's in the 92 percentile for height. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Where do you get that from? I'm not that tall. <laughs> but now he's in the 88th right now. So he needs to bring it back. <laughs> nah, it's all good. I was just really surprised. I say, I, I joke about it all the time. He's gotta eat to keep up that 92 percentile. Exotic cars? Uh, not a ton. I did a, I had a fun day. I was definitely nervous and then both of them were actually easier than I thought. It was a, I did a McLaren uh, six something, I think. And then I did a Aston Martin, basically back to back. So that was cool. And then I never had a day like that again. So, you know. So most of my, most of my workflow is really just newer leases and stuff.
Definitely not shabby cars, but not like high-end crazy cars, so. Which I am perfectly content with. It would be nice to have some fancier cars for the thumbnails. But, you know, those come with their own stress, too. I'm transferring from Sophie to Fidelity. Who is, what is Sophie? I keep hearing it. I don't know who, who, what, what financial institution is Sophie? I hear that transfers should be pretty quick, though, with, to Fidelity. Should I do it like that, or should I do some at the top and some at the bottom? Everything just kind of laid down that way. Apex clearing? I'm on, I was looking up if uh, TD Ameritrade is safe. Cause that's who I'm on right now. And I'm like, hmm. I'm also banking with Chase and I'm like, we gotta withdraw all our money. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen coming up here. This is how we did it, right? Yeah, we gotta go this way. Look at that, see, it's flat. So, pull shrinking is just, like you're not pulling. It's called pull shrinking. People call it pull shrinking. It's really just lifting, lifting and like curling. So anywhere you put the heat, you're gonna get the film to curl in that area. So a lot of times you don't even see it that much. You really just do it. But I was confused with pull shrinking for a while. It wasn't until I, so I made this connection off of watching somebody do it. There's this little heat wave that you create when you're shrinking. And this is this invisible heat wave is like right in this area. And then as you get it going, it's like you put it close, you pull it away. Pull it close, pull it away. Like, and then you'll notice it starting to like zigzag and stuff. So with pole shrinking, you kind of have it flat and you just keep that wave there and just keep it moving up. And you'll watch the film just slowly like lay down. I didn't really understand that until I was like years into tinting. When somebody showed me it all makes sense, videos only do so much. Unfortunately. I feel like they do everything though, because I literally show everything. Like we just go through cars and like, do you want to know how to do it? This is how you do it. But then like, I go through the same thing myself with like anything, right? Like there's this really funny video where this guy was like trying to teach himself how to crochet. <laughs> and they're like, you should have it like this. And then do this. And he's like, all right, mine didn't turn out like that at all. <laughs> and it just got slowly worse and worse. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I agree. There's definitely something with hands-on. It's hard to explain. Um, it, one, it's you see it better. Two, I, it's the immediate correction, I think. So somebody can literally step in when you're making mistakes and correct them for you. Curious what equipment you're using on your head mount. Uh, so I have a Hollyland wireless HDMI transmitter. It's the 650 Pro S. It's like a $650 transmitter. And then a little Anker battery for the GoPro, the GoPro Media Mod. And because uh, I need wireless HDMI out. No, I need HDMI out. And then that goes to wireless HDMI transmitter. That plugs into a cam link on the computer 
which likes to freeze, apparently. So go figure. They released a quad capture card, though, which is pretty sick. But it's $350, so I'm like, mm, do I need one? Maybe. All right, we're going to clean this up on the glass board, because I think we're pretty much good. A little bit here. So the water's going to pull up here and make this really difficult to shrink. Um, looks like a little bit on there. So I got to kind of like just pick it up, fiddle with it a little bit, put a little bit of shrink. And whatever the case, uh, on the inside, I'm probably going to have a little bit to push out. But anything that pops up on a seal like this, it's got to be real clean. So that's the trick. Trying to buy this back windshield for a C5 Corvette. Ooh, that's a tricky one for sure. I wonder, have you inquired at a glass shop too? See what they charge for stuff like that? Because I picked up a brand new, like the Honda uh, hatch. I got that for 165 brand new. Did you hear about all the Bank of America? Okay, that, that freaked me out legitimately. I have been up for the past two days. <laughs> like, I'm like, uh... Okay, we, how much, like, cause we still got, you still got a lot running in and out of the bank. And I'm like, okay, what, I need to probably take some out. How much do I take out and where do I put it? <laughs> and then I'm seeing like, there's what, Union Bank, Bank of America, other ones are starting to close some branches and stuff. Fuck. Scary times, man. What's going on? I think this will go this way. Is there a reason why you water shrink over dryer sheet? Oh, it's just, just the type of windshield that it is. You could absolutely use a dryer sheet. I don't, there's not much that I have to shrink. It's just in particular places. So you can move it around, manipulate it, and just shift it, get it where you need to go, shrink it a little bit, and then smooth it back down and check it. It'd be kind of a pain in the ass. But on a back window, on a normal back window, you don't have to do that much. You just leave it in one place and shrink it. Ah, oh, shit, I feel like that was tight. Just a little bit. What's a list of tools? Um, anything off of my tint stuff. And then also Tint Depot. Tint Depot has my list of recommendations. So it'll literally give you a page of like all the pro stuff that I use. And then everything that I have on my tint stuff is basically uh, you could hit a full car with. The only thing that I'm really missing is like a bulldozer. But I hate shipping bulldozers. In a handle. And probably a couple other little things, too. So, I have a video on the channel, too, about tint tools. Everything that you need. It's surprisingly not much. But there's extra tools for, like, different situations. I think that's okay. I don't think I have to straighten it out anymore. There was one spot that I felt was a little long. 
Is this the same boat? Yes. Yes, this is the same boat. All right, let's put this back on there and see where we're at. There's no harm in testing it on the outside. What's the weirdest thing that you tinted? Uh, this is honestly up there. And it's not even weird. I don't generally tint anything that's weird. This is one of those things that is just like not normal for me to do. So we plan out a lot of extra time to make something like this happen. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. You gotta shift it back a little bit, but seeing how it lays flat. Can you do a tutorial on a 96 Silverado? It's unfortunately nothing I'm really gonna get very often. I mean, if I had one to do, it'd be on a live stream, but. With like any type of top corner on a truck or a car, they're all gonna be very similar. Like what you have to do is very similar. It's, it's really just pull shrink a little bit, finesse it, throw some heat underneath it, curl it, just until you get it down. Vehicle specific stuff, uh, a lot of times with the way that I tint, there's so many similarities in between vehicles. Um, they're not much help. Like there, there's not much difference between one. So having a dedicated video for one car versus the next. It's like unless you're, unless you're like taking it apart, that's where there's some differences and like things that you'd wanna know but I don't hardly take much apart, so <laughs> it's Groundhog Day again. <laughs> Until we have like a boat. Does my tint stuff ship to Canada? Uh, your, your tint stuff does. Shipping is a little expensive though, but it's just international. Window tint warriors for the take apart videos. I agree. Nobody else is really doing them. I don't think. A lot of effort goes into those. They look good. Yeah, you're not gonna ever get those here. <laughs> just flat out. It's like it's just not something that I. It's. I value it. But it's just not what I do, so I, therefore, I'm not gonna try and even come close to teaching it. So, there's, two, there's really two major styles. One, you like to pull stuff apart and make the installation portion easier. Or two, you leave everything together and uh, just have a more universal approach to everything. So that is up to you. I always say if like you come from like a more 12 volt background, you'd actually probably be pretty good with taking stuff apart. Because it's like you guys eating apart door panels all the time. For speakers and shit. YouTube recommended this in my feed. Ooh, well we thank YouTube for that. Welcome. So, yeah, uh, it, I'm curious. Do you watch anything automotive? <laughs> Would actually like to know. YouTube's recommended is pretty good. Do you get tired of tinning? Sure. Sure, I like, I like the end result, but getting there sometimes is just crazy. If I was 
if I was just a tenor, I'd probably go insane. But I think that's with really anything that I'd do. If I only did one thing over and over, I'd go insane. So that's one reason I actually have the channel, is like, that's my creative outlet. Like, I, oh well. I really like building, like putting computers together, stuff like that too. But, I, let's be honest, like, at the end of the day, that would only get so exciting too, because it's like, I want the computer to run, and then what do I do with it? <laughs> is this attempt number 42? No, this is attempt number one with this side. So, we're not doing bad yet, but stay tuned, because the installation is always the fun part. We have a little bit more room. I start with the, uh, with the passenger side, but what's funny is the passenger side is actually the driver's side. So, now we actually have some more room. which is great, because it's easy to get here. On that, eh, it's not great. This is my boat? <laughs> no. No, and I've honestly never wanted a boat. The, okay, so maybe this will help you guys see into how I think a little bit. One, I would much rather be, what is the saying, be friends with the guy who owns the boat, not the guy that actually owns the boat, because you want to go out on the boat, but you don't want all the maintenance and upkeep of the boat. And two, hauling him around, putting him in the water, fuck all that. The only time I would have a boat is, is if I had a dock off my house and I was literally on the water. So what I thought was super cool was what is called a quad ski. That's where, like a jet ski, that you can drive straight onto the water and just keep going. That is pure convenience. Yes, please. That's great. Boats? No, nah, too much. I was actually watching some videos for some headlights, and this video popped up. Oh, cool. That's awesome. I, YouTube's... YouTube's pushing a little bit more live streams here and there, so it's nice to see that something like this actually gets recommended. We put a lot of work into these. So, it might not always be your jam, that's cool. I mean, I can only watch so much of something for so long anyways. But that's cool. Thanks for the info on that. I have fun doing these. I have a feeling I'm going to soak down my hoodie here coming up, though. What if this just goes way faster? What's wiggling? Is it the whole thing? Oh, yeah, it's the whole thing. I thought it might be the upper frame. It's not... It's the whole window. Because if I could undo, there's a bolt right here, there's like a bolt right here. If you just pop this off, cool. That would be pretty sick. I'm worried that putting it back on would be a big pain in the ass, so. Oh yeah, we're gonna soak our hoodie. Fuck, all right, I might have to change out of it quick. I brought an extra shirt. Did I mention what I was tinning? Or what I was charging? In the last stream, this is a four, $450 job. With so many caveats. As a boat owner, I can say you can disassemble and take out the whole window, but it's kind of hard. That is where we do not do that then. 
it's just me here. If I get into a weirdo situation, I, I just, just then I gotta call in the guy, and then it's just not done. We managed to do the other one as is. But yeah, <laughs> I'm doing as good of a job as I can. But I love just how many little caveats I put in there when we were doing this. Because it's, I wasn't trying to do this job. I don't want to do a bad job. I don't want to do a bad job on anything that I do. It's just this is not what I usually do, so. <laughs> We're making as best uh, of a, as good of a time as we possibly can with this, though. So you guys get to see what a boat is actually like to do. Not all of them are going to be like this. There are some that are far easier. But if you get something like this that calls you up, you kind of know what you're in for. And it's up to you if you want to take that challenge or not. If you have extra help, like some people said, probably be worth it to like take it apart, take it out. If you're by yourself, may not be the way to go. All right, we have it pretty soaked down now, but we forgot to roll up our pattern. So we're gonna go grab that. This was really just a lot of cleaning. I'm not too bad. You guys ever have that where you're like cleaning stuff off and then water starts running down your arm? And then if you're wearing long sleeves, it just starts soaking your sleeves. That's what I wanna avoid right now. <laughs> no thank you. Thinking. We should probably flip it the other way, huh? Or should we? Mm, I don't know. We did it this time, but it wasn't exactly easy to do it this way. All right. Some of the high-end matrix, uh, some of the high-end wakeboard boats have matrix borders. Yeah, I saw a couple pictures. There's some like there was like uh, there was an 80 grand boat that I saw in person that was like, oh man, that's way easier to do. I did a yacht once. It had Lumar ATC 5% and it turned purple. Like it was out on the water for years though. And then we were a Lumar dealer and then I got to go out for a day, completely strip it and retin it. But holy shit, wooden frames. Ah, ugh. Not fun. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is roll this up. The guys with those boats have money? Uh, yeah. If you get into the nicer boats, that's where, that's where it's intriguing for me. So, like, we might start trying to push a little bit of marketing, because there aren't a lot of shops that really handle boats. Most, most shops will just turn it down for cars. But if you can hit the right market with it, and now I have the space, if they can drop them off here, that would be far better for me. So maybe we'll get into some boats. I mean, shit, if I can do this one with enough... <clears throat> oh, God. <clears throat> if I can do this one with enough time, um, then I could do another one. And then I, there's this is on, I think, the harder side of things. So, fuck it. Let's do this one. Let's pull in some... Uh, some easier boats and start knocking out some boats. It make for some fun streams. People ask me about architectural, but I gotta go to the house. Here, the boat can come to me, which is nice. We appreciate that. Have you gotten a vaccine? Ah, uh, no. Not, not. I don't want to start a debate about it. It freaks me out a little bit, for sure. <laughs> Not going to lie. And I don't like needles very much, so, you know, there's that. So I've just been 
It's still tinting. Anyways, all right, so let's try and tuck this in. Not until it's FDA approved. I, I don't blame you. There's definitely some like travel restrictions and whatnot. It's all kind of like, I, I get it. I get what they're doing right now, but I just don't want to feel like a liar. I okay. I I 100% agree. I, I'm like, I never know what kind of crowd I'm gonna poke with what what kind of statement. So, um, yeah, I agree. Like, you never know, and then like shit comes out years down the road, and like, oh god, yeah. Okay, hopefully this is lining up well. I just hope that we cut it short enough, but not as too short to leave a gap. So that went well. That's super nice to see. So what was cool was the way that we cut it out. Oh my God. Give myself a nice pat on the back right now. Holy shit. Ooh. Do, do I, I tin boats? Look at me. I'm a boat pro. <laughs> I'm a boat pro. Yeah, we do boats. We've been doing boats for years. <laughs> How did you do that? Detroit, Detroit Boat Studio, 10 out of 10. What, what is that? What's that say? Detroit Boat Studio? Yeah, that's it. Detroit Boat Studio, man. We do boats. We've been doing boats forever. Boat problems, what? Don't look at that other stream. We didn't have another stream where we had problems. That, this is whatever. <laughs> no, that was, holy shit. That was, like, that lined up really well, too. It's all guesstimates. I just kind of like, yeah. And then spend some time shrinking it and cutting it and playing around with it. Time to advertise boat. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that was Nick or not. But we, he, was, he suggested that we do that. And I, it's smart. Because it's like we're at, we're at a good season to actually do it so ah shit we're a little bit we gotta dry that out so I don't want to screw around with it too much we slightly over shrink that a little bit what was that boats we don't do boats I don't do boats I should have left some of these corners just a little bit limp what this is the best boat squeegee I've ever seen Look at that, it gets, oh my God, it gets in the seals. That's pretty dope. So part of the problem with like some of the tools that I'm using is like, it's really hard to get that started. Just that little edge in there. Once you get that lip going, Detroit boat squeegee, everything boats. We do everything boats. So here's, here's one of the problems that I ran in last time. This is like about as sharp of a tool as they come. This is like the easy reach, right? And what happens is like you want to just tuck it underneath the, the, the gasket and then you can get a card, swipe it. It starts to lay in place really easily. But until that, sometimes it just, you're like fighting against that seal and it sucks. And then you can get your actual, oh, fuck, we missed it. Ugh, there we go. Because it's like this sharp pointed rubber edge and you're just trying to sneak your tool down there and then squeegee it out. Much easier. If it's butt up against it, you're gonna fuck it up. 
It's like those quarter windows. So sometimes it's just a pain in the ass and you want one of these squeegees just to do it for you. I was just really impressed because I didn't think this was going to be the case. The edge of this squeegee just fit right into that edge. So if anything, we unfortunately overshrunk that part. So the smartest thing to do now is to just kind of like let it dry a little bit. Put, we'll put some heat on it, but every time that you press the film down, um, you're gonna bring stuff back up with it. So you gotta be careful. And then we got this guy here. So if we can get all our ducks in mostly a row, we should be okay. Damn. I hope this goes well. That, I hope this just, just works because that was, uh, that was nice. Compared to what we did last time. I mean, last time was easy, right? Last time was easy. We tip oats. Shrug. Let me grab my heat gun. Okay, so how much cord do we have? Enough to get over there. Dang. And then we'll screw up the last part like a bunch of times. So these two things here, you see this? Not good. But everything's going so well, so. Little over curved in here at the top and a little over curved there at the bottom. So maybe we can get it to like heat up. And then hold it. And maybe this will stay locked down because if it stays, that's, that's it. We can get it to lock down and stay in place. Push all that air out so it's not feeding water back in. Uh-oh, it's starting to pull back up. All right, all right, all right. Just a little bit more. But if you go too far, you're gonna boil the water. So you gotta keep it in this hot spot where the glass is hot, but it's not gonna hurt and bubble up the film, so just, just be careful. Couple little speckles, that's all right. Woo. Woo. I still don't trust it. Keep an eye on it. See, look at that. You can see that squeegee fighting down in that seal? Hell yeah. Yes. Ironically, one of the best boat squeegees I could have ever hoped for. I wasn't expecting that. Got a fire sale going. Oh no, what's what's GME at? Don't tell me that. What did it fall to? We're supposed to moon today. <laughs> 149. Oh, that's not too bad. It's glass. Ooh, yep. So if you can keep all that air pressed out, the better. So what happens is that edge stays wet. And then a little, little like it just starts to flip a little bit and that tension starts pulling it. And you don't want that. You wanna try and dry it out as much as you can.
Maybe a little towel will help soak up some of that water. But I'm just gonna take care of this spot first. And then this, you can see that that's kind of concerning looking, right? Same thing. It's pulled too little too tight. So if I can warm it up and get it all to stick and stay stuck, we're golden. But you don't have a lot of like leeway with it because the more it starts pulling back, it's you're gonna get dry spots. You're gonna get all sorts of nasty shit pulled back into the film. It's gonna look like a cluster dirt bomb. You don't want that. See, all together if you can. And we warmed it up prior so it's got a little bit of stuff to stick to. I think we're off the bottom just a little bit, which is definitely helpful. Yep, we got just a little gap at the bottom, which is perfectly fine with me. When you're looking through the windshield, you're not gonna see it because you're gonna be looking right at this lip. And when you're up here, like, you're pretty much gonna be like here. It's gonna keep that bottom from like constantly getting water and flipping up. So it looks like we're going pretty good. But yeah, I 100% agree with some people that say if you take it out, you'll probably have, a, you'll, you will have a better result. But getting it out, you need some help. Because I, I don't fucking know. That's what they, that's what they tell me. <laughs> I believe them. Starting to pull up a little bit. So we're just gonna keep some more heat. All the water looks like it's pretty much out of it though. So that's nice. So chances are what'll happen, you'll see it with back windows. It'll be fine, it'll be dry, and then there'll be a little trail of water that'll start feeding across and then get that edge wet. And as soon as that gets wet, flips back up. Ooh, baby, this is going good. I have a phone call. I don't know anything about it. Please go away. I need a card. Right? Huh? Roofing? I don't need a roofer. Uh, here, let me grab this one. Is that 5%? Yes. Oh my God. So a couple little things right down there. We tried to shrink them out beforehand, but it's looking really good. We're, we're pretty, pretty happy right now. Sure is nice to have this go easy, easier the first time, right? Because Better than <laughs> not. Probably have a couple little things that we gotta press out. The glass is nothing to write home about. With a boat like this, you're gonna you're gonna definitely gonna have something. So what would make it cleaner is if we got that to lay down perfectly the first time. So if we're not getting it perfect the first time, you're gonna have a couple little things here and there. How's the glass aid supply? Oh man, don't ask me that. Uh, it's not great. We're looking at maybe mid-May right now to restock, but we have some left, so. I got s distributors calling me. Literally. Oh, it's so annoying. stays slow in the winter time and then this summer popped up and then all of a sudden it's like 
Fucking every distributor's like, my wants. Hey, you got some? I did. And it was fine. Cleared through a fucking thousand rolls in like a couple weeks. And then it should have been no problem. And then we have logistic problems, so hey. So yeah, long story short, pick up some now. Ooh, I like that. Just a little shy on the bottom. All that water gets scooped out, dried up. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, so now I think we're safe. I think we can let it sit. This is, this is that feeling. This is the best, one of the best parts about tinning. When you get through one of those big shit challenges and you can look at it and go, I did good. That is, and we're done. See this one, we have like, there's a little speck here. There's like a couple little up here. Um, and then there's just this little bit right down here which I'm not super happy about. But it's like at this spot again, so, uh, but it's, whew, yeah, yeah, it's like, look, like that's, you're up here looking at it. You take two steps back and you're like, Z. good. <laughs> I try to keep my boat, or <laughs> try to keep my boat, try to keep everything that I do as clean as I can from like, nose distance away. So you can get right up on it and like nitpick the fuck out of it. But that's with what I do regularly. With the boat, come me a little slack here. I mean, wait, what? No, Detroit Boat City. That's what we are. The uh, studio. Fuck. I worked at my dad's shop for too long. His is uh, Auto Tint City. All right, let's do that middle piece, huh? That looks like a, like a real curved piece right there. God, I hope we can do that. Watch, that's gonna be like five tries and a big pain in the ass. Watch that turn out to be like the, the hardest part to do, like the quarter window yesterday. <laughs> Detroit Boat City Studio. Where we've been tending boats for 30 plus years. And I've only been a tenner for 11 or 12 or 13. 12? 13? I gotta figure that out. And we have sock. Look at that. Isn't that so nice? Cut it here. Put it here. Oh, I'm sorry. Cut it here. Put it there. Yeah, if we did it the other way around, then we're turning it the outside. Ew. Ew. Eh. Gross. Razor. Oh, here. Mmm. Look. So, like, a little bit of dirt. When you're fighting with this type of stuff in the seals... I think safe to say you're going to get a little bit of schmutz. Just a little, right? Why'd you switch from Avery to Geo? Uh, it was really about the upgrade, the upgrade path. So Avery, I really like them for their NR, and I still would use their NR. Um, but I started with only, like, the, Avery was a solution to, to fix a, a workhorse film problem. So we needed a good film to switch to, because we ran into a crisis with, uh, I think that was the ASWF crisis at the time. So we needed a film to switch to, and we, we like, looked at a bunch of films, 
And we really liked the look of Avery. And at the time, it was Avery... No, no, no. It was Hanita, and it was called Sigma Pro. The one drawback to Sigma Pro was that it had a little bit of carbon and dye mixed in the film, which sounds like a good thing, but the carbon actually added some low-angle haze to it, and we really just wanted it. You know, because if you, if, like if you do two doors and you don't have a super clear film, the front's going to look foggy, and the back's going to look super clear factory. So you just, like, you don't want any difference there. Oh, dang, look at this 24-inch roll. So I ended up switching later when Geo was like, hey, we got a brand new carbon film with, like, no haze. Cup holders? Tint holders? Look at that. I'm sure this is, this is something a flat glass guy would put me to shame on right now. I'm sure he would just take it, put it on the inside and go... Pff, 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 pff. They do their little, like... Pff. I'm going to tin it like an auto tinner. What do you think about Lumar? Uh, I think it's a great uh, company. A little stuck up, but... Good film, good company, as far as I know. Uh, and you, you pay for it, but they got support for you. So, you know what I mean? More expensive. A headache to tint. <sighs> well, good thing you're watching a master boat tinner that's been doing boats for 30 years. Here at Detroit Boat Tint Studio, LLC, LOL. <laughs> I'm just gonna like throw that every time I uh, every time I talk about it. It's just yeah, I've been <laughs> I've been sitting cars for twelve and boats for thirty. <laughs> What shrinks like cardboard? I missed that part. Lumar was a great shrinking film. Lexan? Oh. If that's the case. Lumar, so I, I forgot about this. I actually reminded myself about this literally yesterday. The first film that I ever used was Lumar AT. It was a one mil film by Lumar, and then it was discontinued uh, in favor of Lumar ATC. And that was a interesting transition for me because I actually really liked one mil films for doors and one and a half for black back glasses but I was pretty new so now most everything is one and a half so just you'll always go there Pro Nano shrinks like butter? Yeah, surprisingly. I, so I went into this video. Like, th this was a while back. Um, they're like, hey, uh, we like your channel. Would you mind doing a video about uh, our ceramic? We'd love to do like a ceramic windshield video. And then they sent me out the Pro Nano. And I was expecting it to shrink really slowly and, and like show dyed film versus ceramic. Just kind of like, this is what you should know, this is how it shrinks, and, and then I shrunk it, and I was like, what the fuck? This went quick. And then I, the whole video changed <laughs> because of that. It's a great shrinking film. It's a little thick. Uh, it's a two mil film, not a one and a half, and uh, it sticks like a son of a bitch, so sometimes it'll give you problems trying to install it. But when it's on there, it's, it's great. And shrinking's great, so it's got its drawbacks still. 
just like anything, there is no, I don't think there is any perfect, perfect film. There's always something that you want to like tweak a little bit. It's like, oh, but that one shrinks a little bit better. Same with global. Yeah, 100%. That has a 20 second delay. Oh, they sped it up. <laughs> Believe it or not, they used to be way worse. They used to be like 40. How much for the boat? Well, here at Detroit, Detroit Boat Tint Studio LLC, LOL, uh, we charged 450 because we've been tinting boats for, uh, for 30 plus years. 30 years in the boat business. <laughs> it actually is 450. <laughs> and absolutely we've been steady boats for that long. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, what do you guys think? Look at this. All right, we can put this down now. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> Been tinning. <laughs> Been tinning 2020 vehicles for 30 years. <laughs> Fucking comment of the year. Oh, I love it. It's so, like, it's such a great shit post. All right, come on. Just... There we go. I thought it was going to slide in place, but it didn't. Yeah, I do a good job. I've been tinting those vehicles for 30 years. And they're like, it's brand new. It's like Back to the Future. <laughs> What's a rerun? It's brand new. <laughs> he, he has a window on the outside. Exposed. Why on the outside? Hang on, I'll blow your mind in a minute. <laughs> Did you pull all your money out of the bank? Fuck. I'm scared to even look at what's happening right now. I will be uh, withdrawing some, some uh, savings on the way home today, for sure. Nothing to see here. Record bond sales, bank closures. I'm going to play it a little safe for a minute here. Oh my God, look at that. Okay, please. Something about boat outside, though. Dude. I ah, look at that! Look at that! That just makes me happy. This is this makes my own like who who knew? I thought I got this was good for auto. It's true. Help is a fucking boat squeegee, man. This is a boat squeegee like you never seen before. Well, I mean, of course, because we've been tending boats for thirty years. Yeah, of course, we made the best boat squeegee out there. Duh. <laughs> okay, if you have a boat, if you think they're going to drive a boat like this, I can't help you. Look, here. Wow, it's on the inside now.
If somebody at if somebody asked you to tint their yacht, would you? Uh probably. I don't want to sound like a snob or anything, but yeah, probably. Can they bring it in? Will it fit in here? Look, it's on the outside. Or right on the inside. Oh shit, he did it on the outside. Oh no, just kidding. It's on the inside. Oh wait, no, it's on the outside. Big yacht? We fit big yachts, small yachts. New yachts, old yachts. Yachty yachts. We do it all. Mega yacht? Yes? <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably. I would probably accommodate that outside. Little Yachty, there you go. Yes, Big Yachty, Big Yacht, Little Yachty. Turned out good. Yay. Oh, yeah, yeah, so... Ignore those rainbowy lights. Somebody asked last time too. You'll see like a weird, like all, all films, when you're on the film side of it and you put it against regular interior lighting, you get this cool like rainbowy effect. This is like green and purpley looking. But when you flip it back over, it's just regular tinted. And then when it's not facing the light source, it just looks like tint. So. That's me. Well, there you go. So that's a perfect, perfect demo right there. Just good deal. Whoa, we're sliding. All righty. That's it. That's, that's the boat. I think I got one little thing to touch up, but we finished the boat. Wow, we could have done this earlier in the week if I'd known it wasn't going to take 20 hours. Ah, oh, good deal. Look at that. Yes. Now we should go boating. Oh, I'm going to use the other one. Even after it's tinted, you can still see it. Is that with the door open, or is that with the door closed? Because if it's closed and you still see like a rainbow effect, that is weird. But if it's open, that makes sense, because it's bouncing off the interior light still. That is weird. Dang! Oh, we got to put the boat window down so it doesn't look all stupid. Do you do any 2025 Camrys next week? <laughs> Yes. Do you have Super Chat off? Uh, I don't think so. If we do, then... Oops. No, it should be good. As far as I can tell. I don't know. Oh, God, YouTube. Okay, so this is why, why they do this. So, like... This is what I see for my stream window. And viewer activity, this is like where all the Super Chats showed up. And the one that I had earlier is not there now. And so you gotta scroll all the way back through. And eventually, all the, the they're gone. So unless you remember who it was, it's fucking gone. Sucks. I've been trying to Super Chat for like 20 minutes. Yeah, I don't know. That sucks. Oh well, I appreciate it though. Thanks for the super chat comment. Oh, you stirred one up. <laughs> People are proving that it works. Okay, well, I appreciate it. Jeff with a three. No, it's not off. Nick with a dollar. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Kendall, you've been banned from super chats. They're like, you do it too much. I, I have no idea. 
I sure as hell wouldn't stop you from Super J. <laughs> uh, ooh. What did they say? Oh, fuck. Dang. Okay, so here's like the logistics. The sample of the two inch looked great, however, would not cut under 10, so I bought two as a trial order. Will two, oh fuck, so still waiting on more rolls. We're just testing out other logs too. Uh, Matt's shaking his big tinties on a boat, 16, <laughs> what? You need an I'm on a boat hoodie now? I wanted to take a really cool picture with like holding a tent roll on the boat, like like Captain Jack Sparrow Tinter Detroit Tint Boat Studio, <laughs> LLC. All right, uh, I'm going to fix that window. I'm just taking a minute. I'm like, cool, we did it. And it's not even all that late. This is an hour and 40. So we spent like a half an hour kind of dicking around so a little over an hour, actually, to do that. Not too bad. So I could knock out a boat in a couple of hours if I got it reasonably well. That's never going to happen, but in theory. Good deal. I'm the captain now. Yes. I'm the cap. Look at me. I'm the captain. I tinted this boat, therefore it is mine now. Oh, this towel is so soaked now. I don't know where to put it. So I just like hung it up here last time. Stay. No. Stay. It's not gonna stay. Okay, Ugh. this is my boat. I gotta swab the deck now. We, we got a bunch of footprints up there, so we're gonna clean that up here. But we'll do that off stream. We'll just do a little touch up on the little boat cleanup. Um, that's fine, that's fine. Just this little guy here, it's got water, so like, I don't know how well you can see this, but this edge is still gonna stay uh, wet. All the water could still like drain down here and just kind of sit in here. So whenever it touches the film at the bottom, there's a potential for it to like kick up a finger, which is also why when you're tinting doors and you haven't got that bottom locked down, you push out a finger, it'll pop right back up. It's because that, that little edge is staying wet. Like there's water trapped in there. And you can't really just dry it out very easily without like prying back the seal. So that's why I always will shrink a window beforehand before I install it. <laughs> I think that is the most frustrated sounding super chat I've ever had. Is that Kendall? <laughs> Finally, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. That was probably one of the best ones you've had, too, ironically. Finally, Jesus Christ. Just trying to fucking super chat. YouTube trying to give you my money. Just take it, would you? <laughs> I can feel that frustration. Good stuff. Yeah, a little, little guy right there. So let me heat that out. The boat window is down. It looks like a boat. And uh, we'll be good. It's nice to have something go well, you know, after a bunch of quarter windows. Looks kind of dark. Yeah, it's five. Which on a boat, like, go dark. 
absolutely go dark on the boat. Because it, it's really like the windshield's mostly for looks. If you're driving, you're driving it out during the day, it's so easy to see off of. And then you have so much light blasting through the windshield anyways. And then most of the time you're just standing up driving. So you're just looking over it. I guess it's the one time that tinning 5% on a windshield is perfectly acceptable. Nobody's going to be like, oh, it's going to crash into something on shore. I... <laughs> Plus, most people are drunk driving boats anyways, right? How many hours of content do you have on YouTube? Oh, I have no idea. Whatever it is, it skyrocketed when we started doing live streams. There's like well thought out content too. And then there's these streams that are like, yeah, we're gonna tint something. So normally it was like eight, eight to like 15 minute videos, sometimes longer trying to take something and edit it down into a nice thought. But do you know what always really frustrated me about, like, I, this is why I really like the live streams, is because there's so many little things that aren't worth making a full video for in, the, in like, the normal YouTube fashion. So, like, and, and I get so annoyed with watching him now. So it's like, hey, guys, today I'm going to show you how to do this and it's like this whole like thought out introduction at the beginning and they're just standing there talking and it's like okay do the thing where something like this it's like if I make if I turn something into a dedicated video we're already doing the thing so it's just kind of like jumping right in and I think that is a much better way to do a video and really a better way to get information across too that you're just trying to like, you know, I had this problem with the window. Okay, let me chop it out of the live and there's the video. It's much easier to do. Cool. So it just keeps popping up. It looks like it's staying down now. It takes sometimes a little while with that water. But, oh. It's just done. Is this a thumbnail? Can I use this as a thumbnail? I don't know. Dang. We can just sit back and appreciate it for a minute. <sighs> Heating out leftover fingers from the outside is my favorite part of tinning. Really? Since, <laughs> since 500 BC. <laughs> I tinted Noah's Ark. Well, is there any vehicle before that? Shit. You're, you're our biggest boat competitor. He's been tinning since Noah's Ark was a thing. So, like, fuck, I just said 30 years. He got Noah's Ark. Fuck. What's, what's a more iconic boat than that? The Titanic, maybe? <laughs> Kendall with the two. Another! Do we have something to throw? It, it, it reminds me of in Thor when he takes the mug and he's like, another! It was great. Oh, and I already broke it. I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> I guess I do it. No, I can't. Alrighty, my dudes. Also, okay, uh, brief little thing about the Facebook group. I didn't realize this. If you have tried to join the Facebook group and you couldn't comment, you now can. Uh, Facebook changed our group to a beta. Well, they, they like gave me the option to like roll it over with new features that they're testing out and everything. And I was like, sure, because I really want to see what they're going to do with groups. They say stuff about Facebook Messenger style chats in the group, so that that's definitely got me excited for whatever they have in the future. Um, but for whatever reason, new people joining sometimes couldn't comment without approval, and the only way you could get approval is if you made a post. 
So now it's, it's open for anybody to comment again. So if you tried, uh, now you can. So that's good. No, don't leave me any toilet entertainment. <laughs> I'm not going to stay here and be your toilet entertainment. <laughs> All righty. Um, I think that's, that's about it for today, though. What else do we got? I, I think I got a ceramic job. I think, I think Nick booked us a hell of a job for Saturday. Um, as far as I know, I have like a full ceramic window tint job on a Regal with a windshield strip. Let me double check. Because what's today? Today's Thursday. So we want to go to Saturday, Saturday Buick Regal, which I was like, okay, cool, a Regal. And then it was like full vehicle, pro nano ceramic. And I was like, Pwah! good deal. Stream the ceramic? Yeah, we're definitely going to, full thing. So 9 a.m. stream on Saturday. I'm going to be late. 9 a.m. Eastern Saturday, full ceramic with a windshield strip. That's going to be... That's going to be a good one, for sure. Uh, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Eastern Time. So, look forward to that one. Should be good. Not exactly on, like, the most exciting of vehicles, but it's, it's like the boat. It's, a, it's more than the cost of the boat. So, uh, cool. Let's do it. All righty. Um, so I am going to take off for now because I will be back on Saturday. I have some other stuff to do today. And, um, yeah, things seem to be going pretty well right now. I will catch you later. I guess i got to let him know that his boat is, is looking pretty pretty rad, so figure out a pickup time for that. That 2030 Buick Regal. That's right. We're doing a 2030 Regal. It is exciting. Ceramic from the future. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Thank you for the super chats too, by the way. 